find and replace is probably a feature that you've used before. If not in Excel, you may have used it in Microsoft Word or in PowerPoint. But there are some advanced features to find and replace, which not everyone is familiar with. And so often it can achieve the objective without having to resort to macros, Power Query or advanced formulas. Let's look at six examples of how awesome find and replace can be. So in example number one here, we're going to use a classic find and replace technique by, yes, you've guessed it, finding something and replacing it. But instead of replacing text, which I guess is your classic scenario, we're going to restructure some dates. In column B, I have some dates and I'm in the UK. So these dates have been entered with a full stop or a period, and that is not acceptable in this region. You can see it's left aligned in the cell. It's been stored as text. We can select the range. So I'll just select the entire column B right now. And I'll do control H to open the find and replace window. In here, I'll tell it to look for a full stop and I will replace it with a slash. The forward slash is acceptable here and we'll convert these to date values if I just click replace all. And there we've made 20 replacements, 10 dates, but obviously the full stop appeared twice in each one. And I can click OK and close down the find and replace window. Now, another cool thing about find and replace is that we can perform its actions on the entire workbook. We're not just limited to a single sheet. This can be a nice alternative to grouping worksheets, copying and pasting values, or using something like Format Painter to repetitively paste formatting. In this example, I want to replace the QTR for quarter just simply with AQ. And I want to do this on all of the sheets that contain it in this workbook. So I won't worry about selecting a range this time. I'll do Control H for replace. You can see it always retains what you did previously in this instance of the workbook. So I'm going to replace the period with QTR and I'll replace that with a Q. While we are here, I'm going to check the box for match case. I don't believe it to be an issue in this data set, but there is the potential for a QTR to occur within some kind of range or some other word. The important step here is to change the within sheet to within workbook. I'll click replace all and 64 replacements have been made. I believe there to be five sheets in this workbook that did have QTR and now have a Q. Now I mentioned that find and replace can actually perform formatting as well. I mentioned it as an alternative to format painter a moment ago. So let's open the find and replace window and you'll notice that we have that format button on the right hand side of both the find what row and the replace with row. So let's imagine for this example that in the entire workbook, I'd like to apply some formatting to all the cells that say Q4. So in the find what, I'm going to type Q space four. I'm not going to worry about replacing it with anything different. So I'll just put Q space four there as well. And then it's the formatting that's most important on the right. I will leave the find what as no formatting set. But then to replace with, let's specify some formatting. I'll click the format button and I'm just going to apply a fill color for now. Let me apply this blue color, this blue shade and maybe a bold font. Why not? I'll click OK to each of these and replace all. And that has made 17 replacements, all Q4s in this entire workbook for that example. Now have the blue shading. Now keeping with the formatting technique, we can search for values using a specified format and we can even pick that format from a cell. So for this example, let's look back at the date values. I'm going to open the find and replace window. I'm going to tell it not to search for anything particular or replace it with any specific value. So I'm just deleting whatever's in the find what and replace with boxes. And then from the formatting, 
I'll use the drop down arrow beside the format for find what and click on choose format from cell. From here, I can click on one of the date values and that will capture the specific format from that cell. So you can see there's no special color or anything like that in there, but there is some date formatting, some number formatting. In the replace with, I'm going to specify one. Let me turn off this bold. The blue is still there. Let me specify no color for fill. And in, in the number area, I'm going to choose a specific date format. And let's go for something different. Let's go for this year, month, day structure. I'll click OK. And then we're doing this to the entire workbook again. We don't need to worry about match case right now. And replace all. And 20 replacements have been made. We can see the replacements on this sheet. But if I close this window and the next window too, and just jump to another sheet, this sheet had date values on two and were the other 10 replacements that were made. So it's not just about cell colors and borders. It can also change number formatting. What a huge time saver and really simple to use. Now for this next example, we're going to do a partial match and we want to remove something. So it's not all about replacing. We're going to use the find feature to locate something and then we're going to remove it. The example being that we want to remove the total rows on this sheet only. So control H to open replace. Let's change within from workbook to sheet and let's tell it to search for the word total and make sure that the match entire cell contents checkbox is not checked because we want this partial match. I'm going to come to the format boxes just to clear the formatting from previously in each of find and replace. And then this time we're going for find all. If I click on find all, it lists all of the occurrences of the word total. Now looking at the results, we can see that it's actually picked up cell C1 as well. C1 being the header for total, we didn't want to include that one. So these are currently incorrect or one of the five is anyhow. So let's refine our search. And before the word total, I'm going to put an asterisk in there. I also need a space after that. So the asterisk is a wildcard character confirming that there must be some text before the word total. If I click find all, the C1 has now been removed. It's found four occurrences which is what we want. I'm going to use the shortcut control A for select all. So it selects all of the occurrences that have been found. I can then close the find and replace window and I will remove those rows by clicking home, the delete drop down on the far right and delete sheet rows. And those grand total rows have been removed. Moving on from that last example, I've got a similar scenario of total rows, but this time I can't rely on the word total. It simply has the name of the region in the totals, which also this time are above the values. What we do have though working to our advantage is that they're in a consistent pattern. So what I'm going to do here is use column D as a way of flagging the rows to remove. Now it doesn't really matter what flag or what marker we use. In this example, I might just use a dollar sign. So I'm going to put a dollar sign for row two there in cell D2. And then I'm just going to put something like a comma so you can get away with almost any character here. And I'm just creating this pattern, dollar, comma, comma, comma. So if I select that range and fill that down, it will repeat that series. So now I have a dollar beside the ones I want to remove. From here, with that column or with that range selected, we can repeat the process from before. And the fact that I will search for a dollar sign in that range and do find all. And it locates all of the cells with the dollar signs. 
And then just like before, I can now use Control A to select all of the cells with the dollar in, close the window and delete those sheet rows. We can also now remove column D or just simply delete those commas. A final bonus trick here. One of the tricks that was seen was to use the asterisk as a wildcard character uh, preceding the word total so that we knew there was some content before the word total. But in this example, we now want to remove the asterisks. What if we get a data set with this character in and we need to get rid of them all? Well, you would select the column, in to find and replace. You would tell it to search for the asterisk. I mean, in this example, there's actually two. But the key step is before the asterisks, I'm going to put a tilde character. And that tells find and replace not to treat the asterisk as a wild card, but to treat it as that specific character. I will replace them with nothing. So if I click on replace all, they have been removed. 10 replacements have been made. I can close down that window and find the replace. And that is our final example. Six different scenarios of advanced find and replace tricks with a bonus on top for handling wildcard characters. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Do you use find and replace? Do you have some tricks to share? If you do, share them in the comments for others to benefit from. And subscribe to this channel to receive the latest videos as they come out. Thank you for watching. Take care.